two guys who haven't seen each other for some time are driving in a car on their way to a Bible meeting. One of them who's recently returned from a trip around Europe says to the other, you know what they call a quarter pounder with cheese in Paris? The other man looks perplexed. Surely it's just a quarter pounder, he thinks. His friend explains that in Europe they use the metric system, so a quarter of a pound doesn't really mean much. In France, he says they call it a royale with cheese. He further surprises his good buddy by informing him that in France a burger weighing roughly 113 grams is a damn tasty burger, somehow a better burger than what's served in the McDonald's restaurant they frequent in North Hollywood. The question is, why? Why do Europeans get a better standard of McDonald's than Americans? After all, the fast food burger, the cornerstone of any nutritious diet, was invented in the US. It just wouldn't seem right for Europeans to get a burger of a higher standard. Well, the answer might surprise you. Let's start with a few McDonald's facts, just so you know how such a great American institution made its way across the pond. The first restaurant was opened in 1940 in San Bernardino, California. That was basically a hamburger stand, but a few years later, the owners Richard and Maurice McDonald got the idea to create a system in which food could be made and served fast. They called it their Speedy Surface System, and they had a mascot called Speedy to go with it. That clown that a good chunk of the world is familiar with known as Ronald McDonald didn't appear until 1965, and by that time the company had been franchised and McDonald's restaurants were popping up all over the US. By 1968 there were a thousand franchises, and in 1970 the company opened its first place outside of the US and Canada, which was in Costa Rica. A year later and a branch was opened in Japan, quickly followed by entries into the European and Australian markets. What the company attempted to do was make the food pretty much the same everywhere. With McDonald's McDonald's, the idea was you always knew what you were getting wherever you went. You'll see today that this hasn't always been the case, but the same meals for the most part are featured on the menus all over the world. In 1975, if you were to order a filet of fish or a quarter pounder or an egg McMuffin in Stockholm, those dishes should have tasted the same as they would have in Boise, Idaho. So if you're one of the 68 million folks in 119 countries that every day hands over his cash for a burger washed down with a tasty beverage, you should be getting what someone on the other side of the world is getting. We can tell you that our wayfaring staff at the Infographics Show have guiltily wolfed down a McDonald's meal in countries far and wide, and we can say the same taste experience that McDonald's wants people to have works. But there are some differences. And we're not just talking about meals especially devised for the tastes of certain cultures. For instance, you can get a McFalafel sandwich in Egypt, or a McArabia sandwich in Bahrain, or a Bulgogi burger in South Korea. But you can also get the standard fare. Ok, so first of all, just so you know we aren't making this up, the web is full of Americans asking the question why on earth does McDonald's taste so much better in Europe, or even in Australia or New Zealand? Americans, it seems, are getting a raw deal when it comes to one of their most famous exports. The first thing we should talk about is mind over matter. If, for instance, you're eating your McDonald's in a very beautiful building, what you eat might just taste better. Trust us, a steak served on fine china plate will taste better than a steak served in an ashtray. On the outskirts of Rome, you can visit the McDonald's Museum restaurant a place where you can chow down on fine pastries and burgers next to ancient ruins. In Porto, Portugal, you can eat under chandeliers in a quite exquisite building. In Ireland, there's a restaurant situated in a 19th century town hall. And on the Rue Saint-Lazare in Paris, you can have croissants and coffee inside a building that looks like something out of a children's fantasy book. Ok, so some restaurants might serve some quality extras, but even if you're getting a standard Chicken McNuggets meal, it's bound to taste better when you're eating it in a historic building. It's also very likely that the meal served in this building is made with more care and attention rather than your Big Mac coming to you looking like it's been in a terrible accident and subsequently reconstituted by a drunk surgeon. Nonetheless, for the most part, McDonald's restaurants the world over look pretty similar. In the UK, there are around 1,300 branches and most of them wouldn't look out of place in the US, but something they do over there in the UK might make a meal taste a little bit better. It's all about standards, something the US seems to have a deficit in in the fast food world. We need to talk about something called dimethyl polysiloxane, a chemical Americans have been unknowingly eating for decades. They might not have known this because it's kind of in the small print on the McDonald's website. It's there if you look closely, with McDonald's saying the chemical stops oil splatter. This is one reason it's found in french fries and chicken McNuggets as well as hash browns. It's not added directly to the food, but it gets in there via the cooking oil. We're not quite sure just how bad of a thing dimethyl polysiloxane is. When the Chicago Tribune contacted McDonald's about it, the newspaper received no reply. As it stands, the EU says it doesn't have harmful effects on the environment, but still, the UK won't allow it in their fries. Perhaps one positive thing about the chemical, which is a kind of silicone, is it promotes hair growth. 
That's what some scientists in Japan said anyway. Maybe if you've been eating McDonald's french fries your entire life you won't go bald. Maybe the scientists injected the chemical in their test subjects rather than made them eat it. Another place you'll find this chemical other than your fries is on condoms, where it acts as a lubricant. We could make a lewd joke about putting things in your mouth, but in the interests of decorum and monetization, we'll leave it there. What we will say, though, is some countries don't think dimethyl polysiloxane is a suitable or even safe accompaniment to a bit of deep-fried potato. For this reason, the British won't allow the chemical in their french fries. In fact, when you look at all the ingredients that go into US fries, it adds up to quite a lot more than goes into UK fries, three times as much. Someone asked McDonald's on its own website why this is, but the answer was very vague, with the company saying every country has its own regulations. The EU, in fact, is quite a bit stricter than the US when it comes to what can be put in your food. In conclusion, fries in Europe might just be a bit more wholesome and a tad more potatoey. There's also the fact that in some European countries you can get variations of fries, and some of them actually taste like they contain lots of potato. You'll find big french fries or fried potato wedges in some countries, and they might be served up with a bunch of different sauces, including cheese sauce with bacon. Sweden went one step further, over there you can order flat fries with a truffle-based mayo. Yeah, that definitely sounds like a step up from the lube-imbued American fry. Now let's talk about beef. On its US website, McDonald's admits that it uses growth hormones on its cattle so the meat you eat has less fat. This goes into the cow feed so it isn't directly shot into the animal. The company says this is not unusual at all. But when we went to the McDonald's UK website, there was a declaration that no hormones are used on the cattle. You can read this statement on the McDonald's UK website. The use of hormonal growth promoters for cows is banned in the UK and the rest of the European Union. The beef used across our menu is 100% British and Irish and comes from farms accredited by a national farm assurance scheme. Ok, so if the UK is saying this, obviously proudly saying it as a means to win over its base of burger eaters, what does that say about the growth hormones in cows? If it's banned, is it bad? This might just be an ethical concern, but Europe goes a step further with its beef. You'll have to ask what the cattle have been dining on. In 2020, McDonald's boasted about a new burger that was made from grass-fed cattle, but that was in Australia. Again, if that's a good thing, then a cow that doesn't get its regular fix of rolling meadow might not taste as good. In 2013, NPR wrote an article about how burgers were made from McDonald's in France. That article stated that all the meat was locally sourced and that all the cattle was grass-fed, compared to the US where the cows had to make do with less superior corn. French cattle also had to have a passport detailing where each cow was born, where it grew up, and where it was slaughtered. All this, according to the writer, made for a much tastier burger than Americans were getting. The European Union is also not cool with how Americans treat their chickens, or we should say some companies that mass produce chicken. The process of washing chickens in a chlorine bath to disinfect the bird is pretty much outlawed in the EU, which may explain why a chicken sandwich in Europe tastes a little better than a chicken sandwich in an American McDonald's. The USA Poultry and Egg Export Council didn't much like the snub from Europe and came out and said there's nothing unsafe about those chicken baths. It seems right now in Europe chlorinated chicken is still a big no-no, although in the UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson has been busy trying to cozy up to the states and reverse the ban. He says there's no evidence that washing the birds in disinfectant is dangerous for the consumer, but the EU has stood its ground, stating the process leads to horribly crowded abattoirs. Is meat that hasn't taken a posthumous bath and chemicals any less tasty? Well, that's not an easy question to answer. Maybe you just feel better knowing the dead animal in your sandwich, frankenbirds to animal activists, didn't suffer as much. Saying that, according to the World Animal Protection Organization, fast food joints in Europe aren't exactly taking chicken welfare seriously. Then there's the does size matter debate. In the US, the Big Mac is just a little bit bigger than it is in the UK. If you have more quantity though, does that mean the quality is affected? Let's also remember that drinks are bigger in the US, the large is larger than in the European countries, as are the medium and small sizes. That might sound like a good thing to American diners that would happily mainline a 30 ounce Coke, but again you have to ask, does quantity affect quality? Would you sacrifice some soda or a bit of burger to know you're not eating chicken that was once so deformed and depressed it longed for its big day in the abattoir? So the meat and the fries might taste a little bit different because of where the food is sourced and what's added to it. There are more reasons why Europe's McDonald's are better. For one thing, all over Europe you can get a beer with your burger. In Belgium you can order a beer with your Belgo burger. 
a sandwich garnished with roasted onions and smattered with cocktail sauce and maritsu cheese. Let's face it, the American cheese slice is not the finest tasting cheese in the world. In parts of Scandinavia, you can get potato tots filled with smoked cheese and spicy chili. In Greece, you can opt to change the regular cheese and have creamy yogurt on your burger, and you can change the bun for a pita bread. Come on, who in the US wouldn't want to try one of those? You could also get tzatziki wraps in countries all over Europe, which is similar to the Greek wrap. They come with vegetables and beef or chicken and taste very fresh compared to regular burgers. They contain fewer calories too, but for some reason they've never made it to the US. We guess test audiences in the US have never taken to them, even though sales surged in Europe when McDonald's introduced a healthier menu there. In France, you can visit a McCafe. In one of those places you might not always hear, do you want fries with that? But they might ask if you feel like a chocolate croissant straight out of the oven, or perhaps a couple of colorful macarons. As for food for vegetarians, in 2020 McDonald's said it would start rolling out a McPlant burger in various countries around the world. But right now and in the past, options have been very limited for vegetarians. Not in Finland, though. In that country, they've had quarter pound El Veggio burgers since 2018, and it's been selling like hotcakes. And let's talk about breakfast. You already know you can get croissants in France, but all over Europe you can find much better breakfast meals than you can find in the US. Let's face it, the traditional McMuffin doesn't taste much like a muffin, and eating McDonald's bagels is like chewing on a sock filled with ketchup. Over in the UK, at the place they sometimes called Mackie D's, you can have a bacon sourdough roll for breakfast and it's actually quite good. The bread tastes like bread. The bacon is bacon. Those McMuffin meals sometimes taste like airplane food or something a spaceman might eat. But the British rolls actually taste fresh, as if they were made by your mom. In 2019, some discerning Brits voted that McDonald's roll the best breakfast sandwich in the city high street. Well, at least according to one taste test which pitted the roll against five other popular breakfast sandwiches. So there you go, it seems McDonald's in Europe offers many more choices and often you can eat your meal in very nice surroundings. There are more laws as to what goes inside your meal which makes for better quality meat and fewer chemicals. And that's why Europe wins. Now you need to watch this, McDonald's vs Burger King, what's the difference? Fast food restaurant comparison. Or have a look at this, I only ate fast food for 30 days and this is what happened.